part of the role of the messengers, part of what they do is they literally treat diseases. They're healers. This is part of their... Now, if the disease of a people is materialism, then in order to offset this growth imbalance, the prophets will often manifest a deep spirituality. A group of scholars and a group of, uh, of people of taqwa, who, which were called the Bakka'un, they began to manifest. They wore uh, very coarse clothes. They ate coarse food. They were calling people away from dunya. They did this as a way of trying to bring the people back to a more middle way. And this is why you have to be careful with certain books that were written for this. Like Talbizu Iblis by Ibn al-Jawzi radiallahu anhu is a book that was written because of certain diseases that existed at his time of people going to extremes in the religion. He often goes to another extreme in order to find some middle way. And this is the contextuality of, of messages, not only of the prophets but also of the scholars. Oftentimes the messages of a scholar of a certain time will not apply to another time because he was addressing the diseases of a specific time. Literally, many of the scholars that speak now, their words would be meaningless to people of a previous time. The Muslims didn't have inferiority complex. They don't know what that is. They didn't have uh, the idea that, you know, quit imitating the kuffar. The, the Muslims were imitated by the kuffar. Hindus wear turbans because Muslims wore turbans. I mean, people used to imitate the Muslims because they were the people of Izza and the people of power. But now the Muslims, you see them imitating the Kuffar because they see them as being, they have Izza, we want Izza. This is what they want, they want to be like because being is being like. When you don't have an essence, Right? If you have no essence, you have no reality, like all these people out here that imitate pop stars and things like that, it's because they have no personality of themselves, they're empty people. So they take the shells of other people, because being for them is being like. They have no reality of their own. So if Michael Jackson wears one glove, they start wearing one glove. If Madonna starts wearing Ray-Ban glasses, they start wearing Ray-Ban glasses. And this is a disease. The Muslim didn't have that disease before. But now it is a disease, and so you'll hear this type of stuff. This had no application to people before us. None. So each age has. Now if you look at the message of Isa alayhi salam, his message is all about mawt, akhirah, warning people about death. Look at the saying that we have in our own tradition of Isa alayhi salam. He says, dunya ma'bara. The dunya is a bridge, so quickly get across it and don't spend time building on it. These are from our own traditions. Beautiful sayings of Isa. The, the, the Muslims have often quoted, this is why Imam al-Ghazali in Ihya Ulum al who was dealing with materialism of his age, often quotes traditions from Isa because of the deep spirituality that those traditions embellish. So therefore, the, the Antichrist would be the opposite of Christ. In other words, the extremist spirituality that is the Christian ideal because of their own prophet by his nature. He did not marry. That's why the highest ideal in Christianity is to be celibate. He did not marry. He ate very little food. That's why the monks used to fast and hardly eat anything. They withered their bodies away. Saint Jerome, who translated the Bible, read his writings. Unbelievable. I mean, Nietzsche says in the, in the Antichrist, he wrote a book called The Antichrist. He declared himself the Antichrist. <laughs> but he really did not like Christianity, and he actually praised Islam. But one of the things he says in that book, he said, just read the writings of these early people and you can smell the stench of what an unclean lot these people were. He said the Muslims are right in despising these people because th th these are, this is not the religion of men. This is a religion of sick, enfeebled creatures. He said that Islam presupposes the existence of men. That it's a man's religion. Which doesn't negate also the, 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 the aspects, the feminine aspects. It's not a negation of that. But the point is that the Muslims were people of rijal. Min al-mu'minin rijal. Sadaqu ma'ahadullah. Ali. This is the mu'minin. They were rijal. Min al-mu'minin. Rijal. So the idea of, of the, the Dajjal is that the Dajjal will come and tell people in the same way that Isa salam, told them that the next world is what you should work for, the Dajjal would tell them this world is what you should work for. In the same way that Isa salam, told them that dunya is, is gharoor, it's a delusion and it will delude you, the, the Dajjal will tell them the next world is a delusion. 
You see, like the beer commercial, you only live once, so get all the gusto you can. Right? That's a Budweiser. You only live once. You only go around once. So get all the gusto you can. This is the message of this age. It's a message of deep materialism. It is a message telling people they will be happy in, through buying things. Buy more and be happy. This is, this is a slogan. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Right? The smiley face. You know, we've had drought in California for years. They said it's a result of all these Californians saying, have a nice day. <laughs> and then when rain came, to show you how diseased these people are, when rain came, everybody started cursing the rain. And they literally in drought for nine years. The, the governor of California said, this is a drought of biblical proportions. This is what he said, because they were in serious crises. And then massive rain, floods came, flooded. You read about that, right? All the floods came. I and mean, alhamdulillah, I was living in a place, everything flooded all around it, except our little, alhamdulillah, I was very happy, I felt, alhamdulillah, because we have Muslim community there. Everybody else got flooded out, so Allah alam, inshallah, Allah, you know, preserve the Muslims wherever they are from the tribulation that He gives these people. And if it comes, Alhamdulillah anyway. Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. If Allah wants to take us all by a flood, that's Alhamdulillah. We're Muslims, this is not our problem, it's their problem. So this is the, the nature of the Dajjal. Now, look at some of the things that this modern society tells them. If somebody's a homosexual, now we have a book in, Cal in America called the DSMR, right? The Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Psychiatric Diseases. Now up till the last decade, homosexuality was considered a disease by psychiatrists. They literally considered it a disease. Freud, their big man, considered it a disease, right? What they did, they changed it. Now it's considered a lifestyle choice. Now when it was considered a disease, there were a lot of people who were tortured by perverted thoughts and things like this. Now part of this from shaitan, we know that. You don't do wudu, you don't do hustle. Shaitan has a lot of power to get in there and play games. One of the games he does is liwata. The hadith that indicate that shaitan yughri, he tries to get people to commit uh, liwata, the sodomy. They usually call it sod sodomites. There's a nice word, sodomite. It's better than uh, gay. Gay used to be a nice word. Like he's gay, it means he's happy, Saeed. But now they've, they've ruined that word. But the, in the, uh, the idea of these people that were the, the sodomites, they would come to the doctor and say, I'm, I'm having sick thoughts. And they would try to do things to cure them. And some people did were cured. You know, they would work with them and they were cured. Now, what does he do? If a person having these problems, they have gay counseling. And they, they now in high schools in the United States, there's actually a Muslim, gay Muslim student association in Toronto, Canada. It's not a joke, you see. I mean, this is the sickness, it's a sickness. The Prophet said there would be liwata in his ummah. And he said there would be liwata of the glance, of the touch, and of the act itself, and they're all cursed. But this is part of the disease. Now, if you... If you look at what they do, they absolve you of your sin. When you go to the psychiatrist who is the priest, one of the priests of this system, in the same way that the priest used to, the Christian priest, the Mithraic priest, they would go and they would confess their sins. And the, and the priest would say, you're, do ten Hail Marys and your sins are wiped out and go and don't sin anymore. And then they'd go and shaitan would play with them, they'd sin and then they'd come back next week on Sunday, have some blood, have some flesh, and then go and the priest would say, okay, do it, don't, don't worry, just do ten more Hail Marys, maybe twenty this time, ten didn't work last time, do twenty, and then this has how it would work. Now the psychiatrist tells them, it's okay, it's not even a sin. You feel good about yourself. This is the idol of self-esteem. Right? We don't believe in self-esteem. We don't want to esteem the self. We call the self nafs. Right? This is the translation of the word self is nafs. If you say izzatun nafs, right, with the Arabs, no, we don't want izzatun nafs. The izza is for lil mu'mineen, it's not for nafs. If the nafs is aziza, that's another thing. Right? 
If the nafs is aziza, that's another thing. But if the nafs is dalila, then you don't want to give it self-esteem and make it feel good about doing terrible things. So this is part of the, the, the deen, this modern religion of secularism.